Uh, everybody, we are here with Kevin and Vicki Hicks. Uh, they have a new film coming out tomorrow uh, called The Forever Room. It's a psychological thriller centered on one woman's attempt to escape both her past and her captor. And it comes out, like I said, tomorrow from Chinimbo Lore and Freestyle Digital Media. Kevin, Vicki, how are you? Doing, doing great, Norman. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Thank you for being here. Um, and thank you. Oh, thank you for creating uh, horror. <laughs> thank you for entertaining <laughs> us. Uh, let's talk about the Forever Room. And, uh, you know, first of all, how, how this film came about, where, where did the idea come from? Well, <clears throat> uh, for one thing, we were, when we started filming this, we were smack in the middle of the COVID lockdown. Mm. So I was trying to come up with an idea for um, a one room story so that there was minimal location, um, minimum crew, talent, all of that. And I just, I just had this weird idea. What if a woman woke up and she's chained in a basement and she has no idea how she got there. And then it just sort of went from there, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's creepier because then all of a sudden the person who's keeping her captive is her mother. And so you get all those fun dynamics. Which, which is always the case. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many girls I've known who've been chained in a basement by their mom. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's so, so basically you, uh, you were in the middle of the pandemic and you worked with what you had. Yes. Yes. Uh, and so, Kevin, how did you, because uh, Vicki, you, you wrote it, Kevin, mm -hmm. you directed. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, like, uh, how did you guys collaborate in developing the concept, or how did you approach the material, Kevin? Um, well, like, like Vicki said, we wanted to, we wanted to write something um, that was, uh, that, that was very contained um, intentionally. And, um, and I, I really wanted to just explore uh, just, just something a little bit, a little bit more back to basics with, with horror um, thematically, you, you know, the, the, the whole, the whole I idea of something that, that was, that was supernatural, but, but not, not satanic, not monsters, not, not that type of thing. Um, something a little bit more along the lines of the kind of horror that 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 I that I enjoy watching. That's a little bit more supernatural, ghosty, you know that that type of thing as opposed to, so it's more psychological in nature than than physical in nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, it just it astounds me how. And it, let's talk about you guys creating during the pandemic. I mean. Vicky, you said you started off just with a concept of, okay, single, single location. Um, and it just, it, it just, it just amazes me how the creative spirit just kind of survives. Uh, and you're to be commended for that for sure. But um, it, it just, what were you up against? I mean, what was going through your mind at that point? I mean, how deep in the lockdown were you guys? And well, um, uh, where we are here in New York, it was you know, it was pretty serious. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah. you know, you you couldn't have more than a certain amount of people together, and and all of that, you know. And you had obviously um, crew and cast. They were concerned, so we were very careful about everything, but we kept it small. Um, intentionally and so that way we're, we were able to navigate it everybody was comfortable and um, and and actually it's it really pushes you um, creatively when you have to go small and you have to be contained it's it's much more difficult to come up with with you know a story that you can sustain like that you know without going off to various locations and all that and the funny thing about this film and a lot of this I think is due to Kevin and our cinematographer, um, Kyle Carr, is it doesn't feel like one small room. It really doesn't. Just the way it was shot and, and the things that we did as part of the, the set design, it feels much bigger than it actually was. It doesn't have a claustrophobic feel. No. Um, 
and that's yeah that was going to be my next question the the uh the cinematography the lighting everything was just very inventive uh and very very clever uh kevin what were some of the tools that you utilized to make it feel not so claustrophobic because as we all know it's a single location film so how what what are some of the techniques you used well, one 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 design design uh, set design that that we decided on, and this was actually Kyle's suggestion, was the the one wall with the slats in it, which we were able to bring some light through, and it actually opened into other parts of the house, and added to the creepy factor, I think, um, as as well as opening up the, the the world, if you if you will, of of the film. Um, also, we decided to place a mirror. On, on the wall, which we were able to use a lot with, with the camera work and, and all of that. So I think without the mirror and without that one wall being partially open, that slatted wall, um, it, it would have been significantly had a much, much different look about it and felt much more claustrophobic. Um, and then in terms, of, in terms of other things like the lighting and everything like that, we, we pretty much set up, set up the lighting um, to be constant and then we would adjust as, as, we, would, as we would progress. And there are some times when, when, when we would adjust it a little bit lighter and a little bit darker um, to give it maybe some sense of, of time passaging and all of that, um, as, a, as opposed to like a, like a day night thing. It was more reflective of the moods and, and, and all of that. So, and, and a lot of that came, came off, came off I, I think, really well. We're really happy with how a lot of it came, considering a lot of it was just sort of like experimental. We really weren't sure how it was going to come off until the whole until the whole thing came together in post hmm. uh side note who did the clown paintings yeah, see, Vicky i did, did. <laughs> i did that <laughs> <laughs> no i know i mean there was hideous there was, you know was actually, yeah i know i know i know and well that was the point you know there there are these sad creepy clowns it's and they're just off they're weird and that was that was um, that was really the idea, you know. It it was like this might have been a, a child's room in a basement, but you just wonder what kind of, you know, psychotic people <laughs> would create this. So yeah. it was it was there to definitely create a mood. Plus, I don't know if you if you pay attention, each of the clouds clowns actually sort of represent a character mm -hmm. that's in the film. So. Um, also, believe it or not, we did it for for a technical reason too, because it was a. It, um, it helped a dampen the sound, the, right. the bounce in the room for for for. So it helped us with audio as well. Um, it yeah, and the the clowns, the clowns, and 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 the and and the other the other things that you would not you wouldn't be expecting to see in this. I'm um, including the the design of the overall set. You know the, the how it's it's very a very colorful set, even though the the subject matter is very dark um all of those all of those aesthetic decisions were intentionally made to just make this a just turn that turn that weird dial that wrong dial just a, a little bit further than than you might normally see in a in a show this size yeah they look like original gacy's you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh. well they're, they're still hanging up in our basement so <laughs> oh god <laughs> burn burn them um so so let's talk about your character helen vicky uh because yeah. uh you you're affable wonderful to talk to very cool helen is not no, <laughs> no not. so what what's her deal you know well um I'm, i mean helen's a, a a kind of a scary menacing person i mean obviously she she changed her time, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she, you know, there's really a lot more to Helen without giving things away too much. Right, I mean, right, right. She, she, she loves Claire, but she really hates her and resents her too. Um, just and that whole mother daughter dynamic, I loved in this because it's you know every mother daughter thing is different, but there's there's always that that power pull and push that you have. I mean, I guess you do really between everybody, but but with a familiar familial thing, it's it can be a lot more complicated. 
So you've got those things going on with each other. And, you know, it, it really is. It's just a love hate thing, push and pull constantly between them. And Helen is, is um, she's a little damaged. She's made a lot of bad decisions. You think? Um, you know, and she, <laughs> she's doing them for the right reason. She truly does. Well, any good villain does, you know. But she's, she's a little damaged. But then Claire has her own baggage there as well, so. I, I think I think one of the I think one of the themes that sort of came out kind of as we were shooting and and certainly in post was just that that idea of well intended well how how well intentions that are that are driven by blind love can almost be as damaging or even more damaging than something that's driven by blind rage um, that that you can lose your perspective regardless of intentions. And I think that, that the fact that we, we all have that capability of feeling that strongly about something that our rationality can start to take a, a back seat to our actions hmm. is, is an interesting um, theme that seemed to crop up that, that, that I really feel is, a, is, is one of the strong central um, parts of, of the story. That's such a good It wasn't point. really necessarily intended at first. Yeah. We kind of wanted to just scare people and be creepy and, and weird, but it, 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 it sort of developed. And a lot of that's, uh, well, it, it's all a, a result of, of the writing, mm. uh, Vicky's amazing writing, and then the performances from, from all three of, of, of the, the main um, women in this, in this, in this story. So the, the actresses really, really brought that, that next level to the script, which we were really excited about. And how did you find Claire? How did you find the actor that was going to be able to carry an entire film? Well, um, again, I mean, we were, we couldn't hold in-person auditions. Right, uh, right. The situation, but so, so we, we put out a post um, on backstage and we, we actually auditioned quite a few women and it, we kind of had narrowed it down to two and we just felt, Samantha just had a, an inner strength to her that we thought was integral to the character. And, and that's how we ended up casting her. Um, and as far as Nicole, we have actually worked with her before. Okay. Um, we still, we did, we did audition the role and she just, she had the best delivery. She, she just nailed it. So, so um, anyway, that's how, so we didn't know Samantha at all prior okay. to this. And um, and it was just um, it was really good fortune that we were able to find her. Excellent. Yeah, I was wondering how casting went during a pandemic. I mean, you can do a lot of things over Zoom. And yeah, that's exactly like that. what we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and just to give you an idea of, of how how impressed we were with Samantha from the start, we were actually reading her for the other part for Nicole's part, and we had already pretty much decided on somebody else for for Claire and just reading reading the other part we asked samantha to read for, for claire and she just nailed it so she literally won that part from somebody else that we were about 90 percent uh ready to pull the trigger on so wow and she did she certainly did not did not disappoint us by any stretch of the imagination because the one thing that we had was whoever we chose for claire we we had that that potential for that that kind of performance that samantha actually gave us um, to really carry the movie and really be that hopefully that deciding factor that would that would take this show again just like the time that we put into the script the time that we put into the production um, design uh, the talent was that that last you know that last factor um, variable and, and we really feel like we hit pay dirt with all of our with all of our casting with it mm -hmm. wonderful just wonderful that okay so uh Creating, obviously, you know, this, during the pandemic and all of this stuff uh, only added to the difficulties of creating an independent film. Um, but uh, for, for any of the other independent film creators out there right now, whether they're writing or directing or, or just, you know, or acting or in front and behind the camera, what, what advice would you give them coming out of this pandemic or just in general? Uh, well, I would go ahead. I, I would I would I would say just in simple broad stroke terms, 
know your limitations. Don't, don't try to do more than you're capable of. Actually intentionally try to hit that line, what you're capable of. And then you will naturally want to always push it a little bit further anyway. So if you start, if you start where, where you're able to, to execute um, well, trying to push that, that little extra, get that little extra more out of it is, is going to be okay. If you already are starting kind of out, outside of where you should be and you keep pushing, it's kind of like, um, like with CG, um, when you see monsters or different effects, you know, in movies, and sometimes you see an effect that just doesn't look very good. And it's sort of like my, my um, rule is, is don't do it if you can't do it right. And I think that's, that would be our, our, at least my best advice to a, to an indie filmmaker is really be honest with yourself about what your limitations are. Cause you're always going to try to push beyond those limitations. So if you know where you are, realistically, you won't try to stretch too far and, and really get yourself in a, in a pinch uh, creatively. Got it. Vicki? And I, I would add to that, I mean, well, from, from really a, a writer and a producer standpoint, keep it, keep it simple. I mean, kept, because you're going to probably be dealing with a lower budget. So you don't want 25 locations. You don't want 30 characters. You know, keep it simple. Keep minimal locations, minimal cast. Um, and because it'll help you stay within budget. And you can do so much with that creatively. With, you know, I, I've, I've seen people who, who've said, oh, I have a low budget script. And the first thing in it is a helicopter crash or something. It's like, yeah, no, uh -huh. it's not really very low budget. If you want it to look realistic, you know. I mean, unless you're spending your entire budget on that scene. Exactly. So, right. Exactly. <laughs> right. It's a well, great it's, opener. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> but it's, it's, but it's, it's, it's also interesting because it really forces you to concentrate on your story. I think you, I think you're, you're much more inclined to tell a better story overall if you are limited in your resources because you can't rely on the gunfights. You can't rely on the car chases. You can't rely on the big special effects and, and, and all of that. You, you, your, your story is all you really have at that, at that budget level. And as anybody that's tried to do it before will can attest, it's a lot harder to write a $50,000 movie than, it's, than it is to write a $50 million movie. Uh -huh. um, because you really, really have to pay attention to story because that's, really uh, on, on some levels, all you have to work with. Mm. Yeah, I, I can't remember who said it to me, but uh, they said, well, oh God, I, I think I'm remembering now. <laughs> but, but it was, it, he said uh, that um, you'll, you can make a $50,000 movie or a $50 million movie, but you're gonna work just as hard on both, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so, you know, uh, now now it's gonna bug me oh man <laughs> he did he did a movie with uh uh david tennant and it was a thriller uh and oh anyway now now i'm digressing uh, <laughs> so but yeah i mean he's just like he, that was his point as well is just focus on the story period so and with that i mean i i just i want to wish you guys the very best of luck on this release um and i've i've heard great things from other people as well about it you know they they seeing it and going oh you know so nicely done um and um yeah so the forever room comes out august 24th which is tomorrow for us uh from uh, just did i do it right janimble yeah janimble lore <laughs> yep janimble lore okay yeah. and freestyle yeah. media and um kevin vicky thank you for creating keep going and uh, best of luck on this this well, thank release thank you thank you norman and go horror buzz we appreciate it yay oh that's so sweet if you yeah. want a t-shirt i'll send you one <laughs> <laughs> i'll wear it I can't return the favor because we don't have any t-shirts oh uh, <laughs> you we'll send you a, a clown right a picture of a clown okay gotta go <laughs> <laughs> You guys are crazy. Thank you. So, I'm going to wake up chained into in a basement. <laughs> if I'm going like this. Okay. Thanks you guys so much and best of luck on this uh this release. Thanks Thank again. Thank you Norman. very much. All right.